If I convince one person tonight to vote with me to close the refinery, I've made my day. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Andres Casimiri. I'm the president of uh, the foundation Greentown Curacao. Uh, we are a non-profit organization and we basically, what we did is we laid out a plan as an alternative for the refinery. I came back to Curacao about 10 years ago. Somebody called me and asked me to help him to fight pollution. And I said, yes, I'll help. We talked on the radio for two years, for an hour. And after two years, people were still not convinced. People would still say, what's the use? It's not possible. What you gonna do with the 900 people who work there? It was all negative. And then I started to think. There was more. There was more that we didn't know or we didn't realize. I needed something to point to people so that they could realize what is happening in their life and that this refinery is an obstruction to further development of the whole island. And let me give you the story. I'm native, I live here, and I'm very privileged to live in a beautiful country with a beautiful nature with nice secluded tropical beaches and a spectacular north coast. We have a beautiful underwater reef and we are a popular cruise destination. But what happened? We still have a lot of problems. If you go around, there's a lot of poverty. And people don't really know where it comes from or how it happened. If I tell you that this is the cause, you might not believe me. And still, it is the cause for a lot of the problems we are having. The refinery is now 97 years old. One of the first problems is this here, this part. That's the asphalt lake. Nowhere in the world, nowhere in the world, did men make an asphalt lake. Only in Curaçao. <laughs> it, of course, there were reasons. It was during Second World War that the Allied forces had asked to produce as much gas as possible and to dump anything they couldn't produce, to dump it somewhere. So they came up and made an asphalt lake. It's a toxic asphalt lake. The thing is 60 hectares white or, or, or big. It's the size of 120 soccer fields. I tried to put 120 soccer fields on this <laughs> thing, but <laughs> I only got to 60. So I put those 60 just next to the asphalt lake. But you have to realize it is twice as much. 120 soccer fields, big. But besides that, it has a very fragile dam, a dike. If this dam breaks, we have an enormous problem. We have a natural disaster on our hand. Because, not too fast. Because what you see here on the top, that's the Caribbean Sea. There is only three kilometers between the Caribbean Sea and this asphalt lake. And there's only two kilometers between the refinery and the Caribbean Sea. Still, we see this on a frequent base. Smokestacks full of sm smoke. Oil in the harbor. And this is oil, this is crude. This is crude oil. Remember the same color as the pictures from Texas? Remember that in the Gulf? It's exactly the same thing. It's crude oil, that when they pumped it, that leaked, and that came in the harbor, and that went out. The crap which was photographed was alive. 
a minute later, it died. Don't let anybody tell you that pollution doesn't kill. Curacao is the second per capita largest polluter in the world. It's not something we should be very proud about. And we're not in good company either. At least Qatar and the United Arab Emirates make money. <laughs> we don't. We don't. If I tell you how much money we make from this refinery, you'll be shocked. We have a negative result. Poverty. Remember this? When they burned half the city down? These were also problems that came from the refinery. This is not done by pollution. This is done by polluters. Those who sit in glass offices in the air condition and make decisions about your life and decide that the bottom line is always more important than anything else. So don't pay your workers too much. And that's what you get. And that's why we have all this poverty. People live in houses like that around the refinery. You might have never seen this because you don't go there. But these are houses just opposite the refinery. And all because the refinery pays us $3 per square meter per year, which is about a quarter, a quarter, a US quarter per square meter a month. Now just think how big your house is. And if you live in a house of 100 square meter or 200 square meters, how much that would be for your terms, in your terms. 25 cents per square meter. That means that a house which you rent for a thousand guilders, that the refinery would pay you 250. Then maybe she gives a lot of people work. Yes, in the 1950s she did. She used to employ 12,000 people. We were, it was a booming time. But then something happened with the oil price. And the refiner at that time, they decided it's no good anymore for the economy. So they decided, let's sell it. And they sold it to the Dutch, to the Netherlands Antilles government for one guilder, or for one dollar. Most people think that was a great deal. But what they forgot is the fine print which you usually find around contracts. That you buy it for one dollar, but you have to clean up. We were stuck with the bill to clean it up. At that time, it was already something like 800 million guilders. But we have good news. We have to make a choice. And it's like, look, that I found a sign that says choice and exit now, because I think it's time to exit. Exit from the refinery. Just like this man, I have a dream. I have a dream that one day that refinery closes and we can start a whole new city, a sustainable green city. <laughs> and with your help, With your help, we can do that. We have to be a voice well heard. Because what we have now doesn't work for most of us. We don't have any advantage. We pay more for gas than any Caribbean country. We pay more for gas in places like St. Martin and in Bonaire, while they're getting the oil or the gasoline from us. The only people that benefit is Venezuela. In Venezuela, they pay 16 cents a liter. You all know how we, much we pay. Soon, we have to, we have to uh, choose. We have five options. Out of the five options, there are only two that gives life to Greentown. We either close this whole refinery, and then we have a chance to come up, 
or we relocate it. And people are relocating it and saying, well, why don't, why don't we put it in Bullenby? Well, we went to people to Bullenby. And you know what they said? Andre, where do you live? Why don't you put it in your backyard? <laughs> I think relocating, yes. I think we should relocate it. But preferable not on the island, but off the island. <laughs> Modernize will cost as much as building Greentown. So I don't think, you know, that should be an option. Although people do think about it. And then we do something very well in Curacao. <laughs> we do very well. We just, just don't do anything. Just do anything, right? Problem will be solved automatically. We'd love that. And there's also talk that we're going to make, we're going to take this refinery and make it smaller on the same location. That also would mean no green town. Not only do we have a green town, we will actually want to have a green Curacao. We want to be the first island to have this. Instead of a refinery, to have a whole real new city. And this is like, like a new city, it's called Green Town. But actually the name is not correct. First of all, it's in English, and we want to have a Criollo name. So I want you guys all write me and say, if you think about a Criollo name, that's like a local name, if you don't understand. <laughs> Let me know. Let me know. Isla Verde has been taken by about, I don't know how many people already. <laughs> it's nothing else than putting the Punda and Aru... The, <laughs> pardon? <laughs> Blachi Verde has also been taken. <laughs> And I like that logo. <laughs> Somebody, as a matter of fact, about Blachi Berda said that it was a supermarket. <laughs> Too embarrassed to say exactly what it was. And they said a supermarket. So said, yeah, well, they kind of sell meat there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the subject. <laughs> we could make from Greentown a green heart for, the, for Curacao. As a matter of fact, a green heart for the Caribbean. I just want to go back to this picture. It's nothing else than getting Punda and Otrabanda together. That is where the refinery is. You have on one side, you have Punda, and the other side, you have Otrabanda. And in between, you have like a refinery, which <laughs> dirties the whole place. And all I'm saying is, let's get rid of it, and let's build a nice town there, something like this. Doesn't have to be exactly, but you get the idea. Of course, we've planned it. We have taken the best. We went to Royal Haskoning and asked them, what do you think about our plans? And they said, well, let's, let's see if we can do it. Let's first, but you start first. So we went and talked to all the people around Scotterhout and all the people who are on the refinery and ask them, what do you want? And maybe you, not everybody knows, but there are still people living at Scottegat, on the water. It's maybe the best kept secret, but there are still people living there. And there's also a small harbor of fishermen, of local fishermen, and we talked to them too. And we asked them, what do you want? And they said, what we want is a machine of ice. <laughs> I said, yeah, but... <laughs> We're going to develop this whole area. What do you want? They say, well, what we want is a machine of, an ice machine. We want F. When we go come, from, come back from fishing, we want to put our fish in ice. So we want a machine of ice. <laughs> and I say, how about the pier? Because, I mean, you know, it looks very bad. It looks broken. So, you know, don't you need something else? They say, yes. Maybe that too. But what we really need is a machine of ice. <laughs> so... They pay almost nothing, and you cannot take that away from people. You cannot just say, well, you know what, we're going to develop this into a beautiful harbor, and where you now only pay 50 guilders a month, uh, you're going to have to pay $500 a month. That's not possible. So we explained to them and said, look, if you allow us to put big yachts next to you and make you a nice, a nice pier, 
you know, you can be there for free. And the guy says, I agree. But it has to come with an ice machine. <laughs> there are eight steps to, final, to, to finish this whole process. We go to, from inception to operation and even maintenance. There are eight steps. We are the third step right now. We, have, we did a quick scan. This is what just, I just told you about, that we went to people and asked them what they want. And we made some initial sketches. And we laid out our ambition and our plans. Then they came, and they made a pre visibility And they went to ask people. They made this kind of a market analysis and a spatial concept. So we laid out plans, which was very important. Then came a scenario initial business. And we are now at the third part, where we already made a master plan, but we still have to work on it. One of the most important things everybody wants to know about, how do you get it clean? It's this word, remediation. It was new to me, because I always thought you have to dig out the dirt and then do something with it before you can build. Now, in Europe, in Japan, in China, in the United States, what they do now is remediation. And what remediation means is preparing a piece of land for the next use. So if you're going to go from a refinery to a, say, a factory making biofuel, you have to clean less. If you're going to put a hospital on it, you have to clean more. But you don't always have to clean. It is too simple to say, but you could also, of course, go, and I don't think I have that uh, sketch, but what you could also do is you could cover it with a layer. That's very simple set, like, yeah, yeah, sure, you know, put a plastic cover it, and, you know. No, it doesn't work like that. I mean, it is, it is some type of material will, which will remain hundreds of years there. You know, so nothing happens. And underneath the soil, the earth takes care of itself. Like we all know, just look at Caracas by, how beautiful that is. That's one of our natural parts. That was part of the refinery. We have developed a strategy and we have put market analysis coming back every time. Because it's a long-term project. This is a project of 30, 40, 50 years. I mean, building a whole new city. This city is bigger than Punda and Otrabanda together. And when I say Punda and Otrabanda, I mean from Recreation Park all the way to the church, the Cathedral of Peter Mai. It's bigger than that. So it's an enormous piece of land. So when you start to build, you're going to have new market analysis. Ten years from now, things might change. What we do know is how many people are going to work there. On the same piece right now of where the refinery works, we can have, sorry, we can have 3,810, no, sorry, 7,635 to 14,000. And why is there such a spread? Be there is such a spread because we don't really know what the population is from Curacao. We went everywhere to ask, and nobody can really tell you what the population of Curacao is because we have such a very high illegal <coughs> population here that we cannot say, well, it's so much. If you count them it in, you probably can create more because the island is too small to maintain 150,000 people. We have to grow, and we have 150,000 people in Holland. So we have a nice population, but for calculation purposes, it is a little bit difficult. That is only the refinery. If you count what lays outside the refinery, which is the dry dock company and the free zone, we could create 11,000 to 18,000 jobs. And we have to ask ourselves what is more important if this would be more important than the 900 people that live there, or that work there. 
Curious has an enormous advantage, like we just heard. We are just outside the hurricane belt, which is very important for the marine industry. And we can attract this whole marine industry, which is now scrambling and looking for, for, for places. Believe me, if you have a 10, 20, 30 million dollar yacht, and you're somewhere in St. Martin or Antigua or Puerto Rico, you're not gonna wait till this hurricane comes. You want to get out of it, but where do you go to? You go to Fort Lauderdale, to Miami, that's exactly where that hurricane might head to. You can't stay in that neighborhood. There's one safe place, Trinidad, the Avis Islands, Aruba, Curaçao, Bonaire. Those are the ones. And from all those places, we have the best, most protected harbor. So I would bet, go to Curaçao. If you bring yachts in here, you can bring a lot of industries. And in this whole plan, which you see in the back, kind of, we have one place reserved for small, clean industries that are specialized in yachts. Then we have the dry dock company. Right now we have only two docks. We have a fixed dock and we have a floating dock. When we talk to these people, they ask us, please find us more, more place. Or if you don't know what to do with the soil, make us more terrain because we need it. And then we came on the luminous idea to put the dock on the asphalt lake, which has an advantage. Because once the asphalt lake is empty, and you want to make a dock there, you don't have to refill it. <laughs> That's an enormous price tag if you're going to fill that. You know, they have calculated the amount of sand that goes in there is about the size of the Zwarte Berg. That's a mountain, by, by the way, Jerry, which we have, a real one. <laughs> Not one of those small ones you have in the Bahamas. And then the free zone, which is now located here, can take the room of the dock mascapé. And why? Because it just happened that that morning we had talked to those people from the Corinda, and they said, you know what we need? We need more space, but we need more space on the water. Because we want to have ships laying along the wharf and loading and unloading containers. We don't want to have it done in the harbor and then drive around, go through customs. No, we want to have our own place. So it's the perfect place. That's also a saving of several hundred million dollars. The cruise tourism, of course, we want to keep attracting. The harbor we have, or the harbor entrance is just too small. We have this bridge. So it cannot accommodate the biggest, tallest ships anymore. But we can still build a small pier. We can still build a small pier right next to the town for smaller luxury cruise ships. And then an amphitheater. Not just an amphitheater but an amphitheater to really come up with shows. And what we think is attracting people from South America and the Caribbean. We have millions and millions of people there. And don't think it's so strange, because how many of you don't go to Miami to look at Shakira? So why do you think it's strange if somebody from Colombia wants to come to Curacao to look at Shakira? And you know what? There are more people in South America than are in Curacao that can go to Miami. So there's a big possibility. As a matter of fact, of this whole plan, we already have one investor who wants to take care of that and says, I want to do that. I have the money for it. I want to do it. And it's somebody I can take at his word. We would like to build something like this, only better. <laughs> It has to be, an <laughs> some people came up with this idea which stands on three legs and, and, and reminds us of the uh, Nancy figure.
But this is what we want to bring. We want to bring people like Cirque du Soleil on a permanent basis here. So people come here. If you know how difficult it is for South Americans to come to go to the United States today, this makes Curacao a very attractive market. And here you have her. Yeah. <laughs> you know. That's the best life. I once did this show and somebody said to me, if you want to convince, why don't you start with this slide? <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people, of course, means people want to shop, duty-free shopping. We can't continue and we cannot do anything with the beautiful little town we have in Willemstad. That's very well protected. That's UNESCO territory. We can't do anything there. You may not even change a lock there. So we're going to have to build something completely new, something like this. I'm not saying this is going to be it, but something like this, only better. <laughs> this town is going to be a town surrounded by water. So everywhere we want to bring that atmosphere back, that you can sit on the water, look out on the water, look out the ships, and that kind of thing. This big thing in the back, it look good. That's a tank, that's an oil tank. And we thought about the same thing. We would take some of those oil tanks and turn them into something like this. <laughs> this is a circus. So we're trying to do that. We also thought about our old heritage, our industrial heritage, which we try to keep, like buildings like that. We could become universities and the smokestacks. The smokestacks to be used as canvases for artists, like Herman. Yeah. <laughs> you see Herman yeah. and paint tanks. <laughs> and build, of course, a lot of, to do a lot of sports there. You see in the back here, a couple of these tall buildings. Don't think that they'd be there. We got already so much opposition <laughs> to tall buildings that we don't think they might be there. But we will do a lot on sport and a lot of green. And everything has to be green. And we put in a picture of a beach. And people say, you can't build a beach there. It's so polluted, it's so dirty, that's never possible. Well, if you know Spanish water, you know that Barbara Beach is one of our most popular, or at least has been the most popular beach till they changed it and made it a Hyatt beach. But it's a very popular beach, and you can do exactly the same in Schottegat and clean the water. I would be swimming there with my grandchildren. I would have no, I would not be scared to do that. The whole town will be, of course, a lot of gr green. There will be waterways. The transportation has to be with water by water and overland, whereby I put one little condola, because this is the way we use to move over the water. And I think Venice took that idea from us. <laughs> These are all the side services which we have. I think I have to finish here, because I think I'm getting a sign here that, hey, come on. Uh, city services, recycling, uh, these are more artistic impressions of the city. So this is Greentown, the way you would like to see it. It's my dream, I hope it's your dream, and I hope you will soon vote for it. Yeah. Greentown, Curacao.